Welcome back to Insta Christmas. I'm Nick and I'm glad you're joining me again. Today, we're going to be talking about Jesus and his character. Without further ado, let's go to our game. We're playing Christmas Mad Libs. We're going to give you some sentences and scenarios and you can fill the blanks however you like, creating some wacky sentences to share in the chat. Ready? Here we go.
Genesis 1 tells us God spoke the world into existence. He speaks new life into his children to give us the light of the knowledge of your glory in Christ. He gives us the grace to receive your word and rejoice in it. Pray that he helps you rejoice in him for worship today. This morning, 
message of the song settle in of how much he loves you of how far he came just for you and how he's so worthy so worthy of praise so let's join with our creation sing if the stars were made to worship so loud Hey, how's it going everybody and welcome back. Now, in case you don't know me, my name is Chris. And last time in the first week of our Insta Christmas series, we covered the Christmas story in quite a bit of detail. But I think it's very important to spend a little bit more time contemplating this question. After all, it really is the most, and I mean it, the most important question you can encounter in this life. So, who is Jesus. Now some would say he's God's son, right? Others would call him our savior, and the Bible even calls him the high priest in Hebrews 4. But beyond that, a lot of us don't know much about Jesus, right? He's pretty misunderstood for the most part, and that's why today's lesson is called So Misunderstood. Now, in Matthew 2, 1 through 6, we read about a famous misconception made by Herod, the king of Judea, at the time of Jesus' birth, right? And at the time of Jesus' birth, Herod was technically the king of Jews, since he ruled over all of Judea. So, when he heard from the wise men, who had traveled a long way to see Jesus, that the king of Jews was born nearby, Herod made the incorrect assumption that this baby would threaten his own political power. Now, all kinds of issues and tragedies arose from this one misconception because Herod misinterpreted Jesus' title, King of the Jews. He reacted out of fear in order to maintain the control that he felt was slipping through his grasp, right? And what Herod did not understand was that this title was a spiritual title indicating Christ's lordship over Jews, not a political title. Now let's take a look back at Matthew 2, 1 through 6. Herod lied and said he wanted to find this baby to worship him, right? But his true intentions were to find Jesus and kill him. Then, when he realized that the wise men had escaped him, he responded with some of the most horrific violence that the world had ever seen. He ordered for all baby boys in Bethlehem, aged two and under, to be slaughtered. Now, from Herod's perspective, he was simply taking care of the threat because he clearly knew that the Messiah or Savior that the Jews expected was going to be powerful. His inability to understand who Jesus truly was caused him so much pain and so much heartache, the worst of which was his own inability to call him Savior. In other words, Herod did not get the opportunity to fall in love with Jesus because he was too busy projecting his own assumptions onto him. However, this would not be the only or even the most famous example of Jesus being misunderstood. Now with that being said, we're going to read John 1, 9 through 13. 
the true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world he was in the world and the world was made through him yet the world did not know him he came to his own and his own people did not receive him but to all who did receive him who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God now one of the saddest common themes of the New Testament is the Jews inability to recognize their own Savior in Jesus the chief priests those who were supposed to know messianic prophecy better than anyone were too busy projecting their own assumptions onto their Messiah that it blinded them from following Jesus so what did the chief priests expect from their Messiah well for one it certainly wasn't a poor carpenter let me tell you that much that's for a fact they didn't expect one who would spend time with sinners have no concerns for outward appearance and encourage forgiveness and love for enemies right instead the chief priests expected their messiah to really show his power by delivering the jews from the oppression of rome which was in charge of jerusalem at the time they wanted a military king instead of coming to save the jews from roman oppression jesus came to save souls from eternal damnation right while the chief priests wanted a fix for a temporary problem Jesus came to solve the eternal problem of sin in other words what they thought they needed was not their greatest need their greatest need was spiritual salvation right I think we all can agree that Jesus was way is way way better than ours right but in many cases we live as if our way is better that's weird right so then can you trust that he knows your needs better than you do that's what you have to ask yourself how can we increase this dependence on the real Jesus the simplicity of my answer might surprise you spend time in God's Word right spend time in God's Word read about the real Jesus and ask him to open your eyes to his ways pray to see things the way he does make the decision to follow him even if it goes beyond your own desires so that being said let's close by reading this scripture and try to think about it all week right read Psalm 9 10 and those who know your name put their trust in you for you O Lord have not forsaken those who seek you so this week I want you to work on spending time in God's Word praying right and making the decision to follow Christ so that you can increase your dependence on Jesus and let him rule over your life guys let him rule with that being said I'll see you soon thanks again for joining us today if you have any questions or need support you can email us at you at discoverdestiny.org or text us at 817-587-4408. Have a great week.